Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another LEGO Harry Potter review. So today we have one of the more interesting sets in this wave, that being set number 76422, Diagon Alley Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. This set includes 834 pieces, retails for $89.99 when it released on June 1st of 2023. Now a lot of people are unhappy because there's already a version of this out there on the market in a direct-to-consumer diagonally. But honestly, I'm really happy that LEGO is finally deciding to make standalone diagonally sets. It really paves the way for so much more that they probably wouldn't want to make a big four or $500 set based off. You know, we get some names of some more shops that we'll hopefully end up seeing in the future. Though still, there are plenty of other known shops that they should also be thinking of making to go along with a set like this. And I am really excited to see over the next couple of years how this Diagon Alley lineup sort of shapes out, depending on sales of this set, which I think should be pretty high considering there are probably a lot of people out there who can't afford said $400 set with this particular location and are looking to add said location to their display. Now talking about the box art, same design that we've been getting since the start of the 20th anniversary wave, you get some other shops in the background. As far as the layout goes, I'm unsure if it's accurate. Can't really make out what exactly is going on back there, though I'm pretty sure this may even be Nocturne Alley, which is really interesting to think about. But spinning us right around to the back side, we have our interior of this set, which isn't as exciting or big as that direct-to-consumer set, but still is cluttered. Really, just the details in this set. Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder, Pygmy Puffs, all of the different snack boxes and even references to the book in here and Fanged Frisbees, like just the amount of details and like small things like umbrage on the tightrope there. It's just, it blows my mind the amount of just little things that they were able to include in a set like this, which makes me even more excited to see what they could do with more expansions to this particular lineup, which we know are going to happen because we get those Technic pins and Technic pin holes in this set. Opening up the box, we get a total of 10 numbered bags in addition to a folder which will have your sticker sheet and instruction manual in it. Opening up the folder, you get your sticker sheet and instruction manual. Sticker sheet including a lot, a lot, a lot of decals, mostly for the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes shop. So it seems this set is supposed to come with two sticker sheets, one of which belonging to the Weasley's Wizard Weezes shop and then the other one belonging to the Owl Post. And um, it doesn't look like the Owl Post one was included in my folder. So I guess I'm gonna have to call Lego up so this review may be delayed significantly compared to others. But looking at the instructions, same ugly render style from the back you get your win guy. Piece count for two pages there. Same exact advertisement you'll be seeing in other sets for this big, gigantic Hogwarts layout, which looks fantastic. I'll be doing a video on that either before or after um, this review, considering how long it takes LEGO to get me my sticker sheet. And that leads to our final overall model for this set. To start off our minifigure selection, we have Fred Weasley, who you can tell this is Fred because you get that dark red tie compared to the darker orange that you'll see for his brother George, which we'll be looking at momentarily. Now you may think this is the same exact version that we saw back in the Diagon Alley set back in 2020, but it's not. The one thing that makes this figure different to that one is the fact that LEGO decided to switch the facial expressions for both Fred and George, so they have the opposite facial expressions that they have in the Diagon Alley set, which is kind of weird. But needless to say, it's not a bad facial expression. It's the same one introduced in the collectible minifigures. You get one with a nice smirk. And from the other side, a laughing face, that short haircut style for the hairpiece. Also spin him around so you can take a look at the back printing, which should look the same on his brother. 
George Weasley, who you can tell it's him because of the dark orange used for the tie there, and also the green on the undershirt compared to the orange. Again, it's just really cool to see that LEGO went all out by designing unique torsos for each of these characters. Same prints as seen in the Diagon Alley set, but again, just the facial expressions got swapped for the two twins, which is really interesting. Open mouth from the front side and from the back. A nice smirk, which I much prefer to the other facial expression there. Same hair piece you'll see for his twin brother. And the back printing will look the same on both of these figures. Ron Weasley includes a brand new torso piece for his figure. You get the same facial expression we've been getting since 2019 with a smirk. And then an unhappy look from the back side. Hair piece, which is nice to get, which we saw all the way back in 2010. This is used for that year five through seven, I guess. Well, we don't know if it's used for Deathly Hollows as of yet. Versions of Ron Weasley. Back printing, no leg printing, which is fine. Decent figure. We've seen so many common muggle clothing Rons at this point. It's really funny to see all of them in their striped outfits. Ginny Weasley also comes with a brand new torso piece, though the facial expression is the same exact reused one from 2018 Jurassic World, with the smirk from the front. And then the scared look from the back. I really wish that they would do something closer to what they did in the collectible minifigure series, which wasn't bad, though still the one within the most recent direct-to-consumer, the Hogwarts Express, even for like the older Ginny, is probably the best facial expression we've gotten since like 2010. For Ginny Weasley, which is just crazy to think about. You also get some back printing to help define the figure. No leg prints. Same exact hair piece we've been getting since 2010 for Ginny, which works very well. Next up, we have Lavender Brown, who comes with a brand new torso print. Facial expression being the same as the last version that we saw within the Astronomy Tower. Though they changed up the hair piece, and I definitely think the older hair piece worked better, you know, which I don't really like this hair piece because it's the soft plastic from LEGO Friends with the holes for the accessories, but this kind of looks like Hermione just because they use this hair piece on the Hermione Granger figure within LEGO Dimensions, which is really hilarious. Facial expression is from Rey in Star Wars with the smirk, and then the unhappy look from the back side. Torso print, I think, turned out really nice. I'm not exactly sure about the legs. I think they could have done something different there. You get one accessory of this 1x2 printed tile for a letter, which will go with the Owl Post Shop. Quick look at the back printing, just so then you can see the rest of her outfit. Looks really nice. Love the torso print. Probably the best part of this figure. A surprise for sure, but a welcome one. We have Ramilda Vane for the very first time ever in LEGO form. We get a brand new torso print. And we also get a brand new facial expression in that warm tan color. Get a nice smirk from the front of her face. And from the back side, you have this swooning look while she's looking for Harry, who's non-existent in this set. Now, honestly, if they included Hermione in this set, I really would have loved to have seen Cormac McLaggen. But still, it's a bonus to get Ramil Devane, even though Harry's not exactly included in this set. It's also really funny to see both Ron and Lavender together again in a set. And finally, to round out our minifigure selection, LEGO took some liberties and made the Owl Postwoman, which I believe the outfit is slightly based off the theme park design. I'm not exactly sure. It's really nice to get a purple suit torso print, though. I expect that'll be useful for some people. Get some back printing there. No leg printing, which isn't necessary. Facial expression is one that we've actually seen in two other sets at this point, both the foosball table and the most recent icons of play. Get the smirk from the front, and I'll spin that right around so you can see it's only the one facial expression for her minifigure. This video would have been out a few weeks earlier, though unfortunately I was missing the sticker sheet for the Owl Post Shop. It took a long while. As soon as I found out that that sticker sheet was missing, I called LEGO up and this was back on June 2nd, so it's been however many days that you see numbered on the screen now since I called them and I finally was able to build that section. I didn't want to build it without having the sticker sheet just because some of them are a little cramped in as you'll see when we take a closer look. But anyways, LEGO was kind enough not just to send the one sticker sheet that I was missing, but 
two more copies of this sticker sheet, which you may notice that I did already take some off, so we'll be having a little bit of fun later on in the video when we have our comparison of this to the larger direct-to-consumer version. So starting our look at this set with the Owl Post Shop, this is a really interesting place to actually get for the very first time in LEGO form. It does really look like LEGO is planning on creating this whole lineup of Diagon Alley shops, which I'll talk more about when we get to the Weasley's shop because we actually get a little reference there, which isn't entirely accurate to what the shop actually looks like, but still will uh, will point us in the right direction of some future possible sets to see in this lineup of Diagon Alley sets. But anyways, get some stickers here with our logos for the shop, the Owl Post on this 2x2, circular tile and this three by three circular tile we see the return of the open wing owl in gold which we saw in the chamber of secrets set you have a little door which you can actually open but it's blocked off a little bit for the lady to stand behind though you can also just see her through the front door there you have a spot to drop off letters or you can even drop them through the ceiling here which i think is really neat that they include that option if you rent out an owl and have it carry the letter and drop it down through the system there. I think it's really cool that they included that feature. Additionally, we have a few jumper plates as resting spots for our owls and just some extra stickers from the background of where they're chilling. We get this owl piece, which we have seen in two other sets at this point, one of which being a poly bag. As a whole, the color scheme of this I think is also really cool, especially getting a lot of the sand blue and getting these pieces in sand blue, I think a lot of people will like that. Get some extra lights from the front of the building. And that brings us to the back side. We get Technic pinholes as we're supposed to connect this to the whole system and you'll see that also on the Weasley shop. Get Technic pins to also help connect it from that side. We have some miscellaneous mail up on top here, one more of those printed letter pieces, and a spot to stand your owl post woman while she's manning the desk, and also the building techniques there in order to get the curves there I think is really cool. Get a sticker also from this back panel, which is a little hard to see. I'll try and get a better shot of it, but you're not missing much. Just a few cubbies with various mail packages and such. If anything, I do have to appreciate that LEGO is going all out and trying to make some of these more obscure shops in a smaller scale, and especially getting smaller scale Diagon Alley sets. I think a lot of fans, especially those who can't afford that giant $400 set, are really going to enjoy this. The other corner piece included, which definitely looks like a corner piece just because of how rounded it is from this side, we have the Weasley's Wizard Weezes shop, and this is just cluttered with details in the interior. It may not be as accurate as the one that we got as the direct-to-consumer, but I'm really, really pleased with how this set turned out. It's just better than I ever could have expected for the scale that you're getting, and also it's something that feels in really good likeness to the sense that we got back in 2011, so that's another thing that I have to appreciate. So if they don't completely continue this lineup of smaller scale Diagon Alley sets, then for sure this will still fit in with something. Now I did bring this up a couple of minutes ago, but we have some references to what could possibly be some future sets that we'll see in this lineup, including Madame Malkin's, which is the robe shop, the Magical Menagerie, and then Sugar Plums, which is the equivalent of Honey Dukes in Diagon Alley, the sweet shop, so that's pretty nice that they have all of those references, all of which I don't believe we've ever seen before in LEGO form. Maybe the Magical Menagerie we might have seen. Madame Malkin's maybe a small, small reference, but none of these we've actually gotten the actual locations for, so it should be really exciting to see if we do end up seeing any of them in the future. Now my only complaint with them including this here is that it's not accurate because there's supposed to be more information about the Weasley shop on this banner here and not these other shop locations, just according to what you actually see within the actual real world version of the Weasley shop. Now talking about the exterior color scheme, Wise is pretty much the same as we saw for that direct-to-consumer version. 
I love getting these curved window panes. These are so amazing. You get them all from the center here and you even get them from the sides. I really love how those turned out. Also, just like the direct-to-consumer, we get the text wrapping around the building, which I don't think it's all of it, just because they wouldn't be able to fit all of it on such a small thing, but anyways, it's nice to see that they include it. Weasley's wizard wheezes all cut up. It may look like a lot of stickers, especially when you look at it like this, just so, so many stickers to wrap around this text and all these different slope pieces, but I think it's all worth it and it looks really nice. You'll see it continue from the very top over here, Disastrous Delights, Masterpieces of Modern Magic Petrifying Products. Wow, really cool. Another fun part of this build is the fact that we also happen to get the actual Fred George Weasley within the centerpiece here with the arms and everything, you get those hinge pieces in order to move those up and down, the clip piece connection for the hand at the top for the hat, and even the bunny in which you can disappear, just standing on that jumper plate there. And you can just pretend to have the hat on top. It doesn't reach entirely, but it is what it is. It's fine. You get a sticker for the face piece there, which is on a slope piece, just like another accessory, which I'll show later on, which you can switch out for. I'll throw a picture on screen. You also get a sticker for the body there. Really love that they did that. And you can see the legs run all the way to the very bottom. One last small thing that I gotta say about this exterior bit, we happen to get a little reference to the Skiving Snack Boxes, which they do happen to have these types of advertisements outside the shop, so I do appreciate them including that. One thing I would have really loved to have seen here, though of course wasn't necessary, is it's something that we really only saw within the books, is if they included some sort of why are you worrying about you know who? You should be worrying about you know who. The constipation sensation that's gripping the nation. As I said, it's just fantastic. All of the different references inside here, it's just mind-boggling how many things that they were able to capture in this set. It's just, I'm so, so impressed with it. Now, first things first, we actually get two parts in which you can remove First of which being this puking pastels display, which you have a bunch of the little sweets coming out of this girl's mouth. Kind of looks like Ginny. I don't know why, but it just I just feel like this looks a lot like Ginny. I hope that wasn't really what they were trying to reference in this, but you know, still it's really hilarious. And you get some stickers there for both the face, again that slope piece, and a slope piece here, and that rounded 2x2 two two brick there. Another removable spot is for the cash register. You get some studded area to stand your minifigure. You get a sticker on this cheese slope. And you get a printed 1x2 caution tape sort of piece there, which is nice to get. We've seen it in other sets, though. With that stuff out of the way, I can point out our Technic pin holes and our Technic pins, which help you attach this to the other piece or to whatever else we end up seeing in the future. You can either connect it like such, or you can connect it from the other side here. And I'll also show pictures from the opposite side, just so then you can see what that looks like. Now one big thing that you may notice is missing here compared to the direct-to-consumer is the stairs that are in like this middle portion, which is a little disappointing that they weren't able to include that in some way, shape, or form. I think it would have been really nice, though yeah, it's fine. It is what it is. Most people who have the bigger set won't mind because they would probably end up just buying this for a lot of the different sticker references here of all the different products that you can also just take off of this build and throw onto that larger one which I'll be showing later on in the video. Now speaking of some of the different references on the shelf here, from the bottom you may notice a familiar print from last year, that one by one circular tile for the extendable ear. Really great to see that coming back yet again. We have our first box, which is referencing the bombastic bombs, which is cool. We get these chattering teeth here. Fever fudge is part of the skiving snack boxes. This, I believe, is supposed to represent a decoy detonator. At least that's what it looks like to me, just with like the shaping and everything of it. 
We have one of those lollipops down here. From the back, you get some love potions. Pretty simple build up. Probably my most favorite reference down here has to be this, which is a reference to the book. We don't really see this within the film. This is supposed to represent the punching telescope, which is left at the burrow, and Hermione accidentally punches herself in the face with it within the book, so really funny that they were able to include this as a reference. Makes me so, so happy. This is probably the one thing in here other than this up here that I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to represent. Same thing with this little bit over here. Not sure exactly what some of this stuff is supposed to be. If you happen to know, tell me in the comment section below. would be really happy to hear your thoughts. But speaking of our skiving snack boxes, we have another box up here with the fainting fancies and the nosebleed nougat down below. Moving up to the very top level, we have another printed piece on this 2x2 circular tile for a fanged frisbee. Love that that's a brand new print. Really hope that we see that in a Hogwarts set. Would be really funny to infuriate Filch. We get another one of our skiving snack boxes, the puking pastils, which we happen to get a better reference to down below. Hope, don't know why this doesn't want to focus for me. There's a better look at that. We have our Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder, which is referenced with this rock piece, which I believe is a brand new recolor for 2023. We saw it in one of the flower sets, I believe, for this year. Pretty great to get that, though. Shouldn't it be black? I don't know why it's that color. It's kind of weird to me. I can't tell you how excited and happy I am to see this as a brand new print. Yes, we're finally getting Lego Pygmy Puffs, which, yes, it's just a ball piece with the anti-stud on the bottom with the uh, axle connection, but still, I'm so, so happy to get Pygmy Puffs. We have Ginny here with Arnold. Just such, such a fantastic thing to get, you know, again, you just get the printing from the front of that. I'm so, so happy. You get two of them. Couldn't ask for anything better with these. So, so, so happy. A reference to a product which I believe was only referenced within the films, though we also saw it within the Harry Potter video games, are the sticky trainers. These are sort of like these shoes that allow you to walk on walls, though in the video game there was like special areas in which you would be able to walk with these, so that's pretty cool to see those referenced. We have our last bit of Weasley products over here. The Electric Shock Shake, which is sort of like the equivalent of like a handshake shocking thing, though it's actually like a fake hand that comes out of your sleeve, so that's pretty cool. I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I feel like this bottle is supposed to represent the 10 second pimple vanisher. I just know that this has like a red bottle of some type. I don't know why, it's just... That's what it feels like to me. I wish that, that would have been printed if that's really what this is, but needless to say, they used the prints in the correct spots. And lastly, can't have the Weasley shop without the basic Blaze box. I don't know why my camera is having such trouble focusing on these little products. Must be because there's just so much going on in this set, so many cool things to look at. But I saved the best thing for last, and I'm so, so happy with this reference. I can just hear this in the back of my mind. I will have order as Umbridge goes back and forth, though we don't really get much movement. I think the bonus to this would have been if they were able to actually get her to go back and forth on the tightrope. But still, giving us a new printed face for Umbridge, fantastic. And it's also not on the correct sort of flesh tone for her figure, so it's like a wooden umbrage. I think this is really hilarious, makes me so happy. I'm gonna put that on the Death Eater dummy within the Room of Requirement, but still, all of the prints that they put in this set, the umbrage face for the Pygmy Puffs, the Fanged Frisbee, it's just so amazing what they were able to do with this set. I'm so, so happy with it. Before I end off this video, I did want to do a quick comparison of this set to some other similar Diagon Alley related sets, starting off with the three buildings that we got back in 2011, which are Gringotts, Ollivanders, and Borgen and Burks. Here's just a quick look at what these two shops look like alongside those sets. As a whole, I'm very pleased with it. They are about similar in scale as far as like interior and everything. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing these three shops appear again sometime in future in this same exact scale. I am really interested to see what kind of upgrades they can do, especially with Ollivanders with these curved window pieces. I think it's going to be fantastic. 
especially getting Borgen and Burks. That is really long overdue, even though I would have loved to have seen it in the scale of the other set. I don't think we're really going to make the cut there as Diagon Alley is soon to retire, even though we're getting that gigantic Gringotts in September. I think the time for more sets in that scale has really passed, and it's really unfortunate that they weren't able to monopolize on that. Together at long last, we have the 2023 and the 2020 Diagon Alley versions of Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Now the giant direct-to-consumer one has a little bit more area down here for your minifigures to stand in front of the shop, in addition to that little bit of Nocturne Alley, which is such a terrible hint if they're not going to give it to us in that scale. Hopefully we end up seeing it in future, but again, I don't really bet on it. As far as the color scheme goes, pretty much the same for both of these buildings. You get the same colors for the doors and everything. One thing that I really love about this one is that we use those curved window pieces compared to this one where you just use the regular old straight on ones, which I think that if this set used those window pieces, it would have been even better. As far as the face and body of Fred and George Weasley, I think the representation on the smaller set is a lot better, especially for the head. I like that they used something stickered instead of this brick build version, which I don't really like particularly. You also get the reference to the vanishing bunny here. This place you just, you don't. The gear system inside is pretty neat, and the fact that the hat actually reaches is good, but you know, again, it's just, I think the one on the newer set is a lot better. One thing though about this older set that the newer set cannot take away, and which makes this the far superior version, you get a roof, but not only that, this interior so much more detailed as far as like, just the stairs and everything. I'm so, so in love with this. This is probably the best interior we ever could have wished for in a Weasley shop. This one, though it does have its merits as far as the sticker references and references to the books, this one is still just the star of the show. Now, the big question is, should you buy this set if you already have this one? I mean, if this set is on sale, on a good clearance sale, I definitely recommend it because it is probably the best set. At least as far as I feel, this might be one of the better sets in this current wave of LEGO Harry Potter. But at the same time, I know a lot of you probably already have this giant version, so why would you want to have this? Well, I tell you the reason why is all of these references you can just throw in here. And as I showed earlier on, all of those sticker sheets really paid off to give me a ton of Weasley products that I'll be able to stock the shelves or at least make some more shelves and stock them within this older copy. Additionally, I may even add some more products here as there are a few things missing that I really would have liked to have seen here, specifically headless hats, even though again, it's not something that's mentioned in the films. I think it would have been really cool to see that referenced in this newer set, or maybe even a small reference to the portable swamp, which we even saw more of within the Harry Potter video game. There are just so many Weasley products and the ones that they chose for this newer set, I think are fantastic. And especially just getting some of these like references, like which we don't even see some of them within this older set. There are a mix of references that are in here that we don't see here, and there's just mainly more references that we see in this newer set that aren't included in that older one, like the Pygmy Pops and the Fanged Frisbee, and even the Extendable Ears, which I can bring out that one from the 12 Grim Old Place, and even just add that as a reference to this older set, so that's just amazing. So overall for $90, should you get this set? I think I've already really talked about this. I think this is a wonderful set. It's probably one of my favorites of this current wave just because of the references. It's like outmatched compared to all of the other releases in this wave. As far as references go, the interior isn't as good as the one that we saw in 2020, but just the references, getting all of those different snack boxes and even a lot of the prints like the Pygmy Puffs and the Fanged Frisbee is just another one that I never really expected to see LEGO make. Additionally, getting a shop from Diagon Alley, which we've never seen before, the Owl Post shop is great to see. I'm really excited to see what other shops we get, like Madame Malkin's, the Magical Menagerie, and Sugar Plums. I'd love to see Gringotts and even another Ollivanders in this style in order to create this new lineup of Diagon Alley, which I think a lot of fans are really going to be happy about, especially those who didn't want to spend 
$400, even though it's going to eventually lead up to you spending $400. I guess another good bonus about this is if you don't like the other shops, you can just pick and choose which ones you like. Though as far as I go, I'm definitely getting all of these sets, and I'm really excited to see what else we end up seeing in the future. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will have order.